Good morning world. Little Shane here. It is Saturday, August 3rd, I believe. Or is it August 2nd? I believe it's the 3rd. Or I'll get to you. Because I know it's important to you. Actually, I don't understand why, but it's always important to me. Yeah, August 3rd. Saturday, August 3rd, 2019. I have no idea why I'm obsessive like that. No clue. I, I can't. I can't begin to tell you why that is. <laughs> Anyhow, it's Saturday morning, August 3rd, 2019. There we go. I haven't been around lately. Um, just too much going on. Too crazy. Uh, and I've been enjoying my vacation. As you can see, yeah, yeah, you can definitely tell that I haven't touched a razor in about a week. <laughs> Because I have it. Nope. 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 And now it's starting to drive me nuts. It's itchy. I gotta get. I gotta get that shaved off. Um. <laughs> my wife and son are still in the Philippines. They will be home on Wednesday. So that's something to look forward to. And what's been going on is a whole lot of nothing. We have been lazy at home. We go out a little bit here and there to the dollar store, to the grocery store. But other than that, psh, nothing much has been going on. Oh, last Saturday, we did have Eleanor's cousin, John, over um, for dinner, and he is a great fella. I like him. The story about how they uh, realized that they were cousins was kind of funny. John has been her bus driver for years, but I guess it was for six months. He was just saying hi to her every day, and then his mother showed him a Facebook uh, page, and it was of members of his extended family. He said, oh, who's that girl there? And his mother goes, oh, that's Eleanor, Sharon's daughter. And he was like, oh my God. And she explained to him how they're cousins, so they started talking and, you know. Anyway, he seems like a good guy. I like him. And uh, if John, if you're watching, you're welcome to come for dinner anytime. He even offered to drive me and the kids to the lake. And I would have taken him up on that offer, except for... The last few days, my L youngest daughter went to her friend's house and spent like three or four days there, and she had a blast. <laughs> so me and Eleanor took that opportunity to have some one-on-one -on -one time, which was great, right? It was, uh, we enjoyed it. We, we watched a lot of movies, we chit-chatted a lot, we, well, we just did normal, lazy summer stuff. <laughs> It's been a lazy summer stuff. My God, I think I took a nap every day this these past two weeks. I don't usually do that, but just bam. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now I did miss an opportunity. A friend of mine named Chris invited to take us to the lake well, last week, and he invited on Facebook. And unfortunately, I'm not on Facebook 24/7, um, and sometimes I don't see messages. Of, for like, you know, for as little as 20 minutes or as much as 24 hours. And the best way, any of my local friends here, to get a hold of me is to call. That's your best way, okay? Um, but Chris, I appreciate the fact that you were willing to take us with you to the lake. Uh, I'm sorry I missed it. I want you to know that I am not avoiding you, although it seems like we just kind of played the message game. I am definitely not avoiding you. You are my oldest and one of my dearest friends, and I hope we get to hang out. Um, what else is there? I want to take a moment to, to again thank everybody for helping us get Gurley and Ken to the Philippines. I appreciate it. It was a big deal and a big help. And if I'm ever in a position to help you guys, let me know and I will do so. About it for all the updates. Now, I bet you're wondering about the R Muck diet. How did I do on that? Well, it's been two weeks. I started it Saturday the 20th, I believe. And yeah, so it's been two weeks. I weighed myself and I lost eight pounds. Yeah. I, I didn't believe it either. I lost eight pounds on the R Muck diet. Just swallowing corn. And I didn't even restrict myself these two weeks. I enjoy pizza. I enjoy fried chicken. I had pop. But 
before every meal. Well, in the beginning, how I did it. This is how I did it because um, I know that I have a sensitive stomach in, in many ways. So what I did was the first three days, I only had, I had a cup of corn before breakfast, okay? And then, you know, some time after that, I would have two cups of corn, one before breakfast and one before um, uh, lunch. And then I graduated to three cups, you know, one before each major meal. But here's some side effects that happened to me that I, I don't know if it's normal. I didn't see it in the book, but twice during my first week of going on the Armok diet, I didn't feel like eating for two days, right? It wasn't two days in a row. It, would, it was, um, I started on Saturday, and then Sunday, and then Monday, that's when I started taking the two cups, right? Tuesday, I didn't eat anything until 8 o'clock that night. I wasn't starving. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't even ravenous when I ate something, right? And then Wednesday, I did two cups. And then that Thursday, I didn't eat anything until 8, eight o'clock, 9 o'clock that night. Right? And then Friday, I went up to three cups. Saturday, three cups. Sunday, again, didn't eat anything until 8 o'clock that night. And it's happened one more time, and that was... Uh, um, Thursday just went by. I'll just go for periods where I just don't feel like eating, and I don't, I don't know if it's the Armak diet, um, or, you know, it's got to be the Armak diet, to be honest. I mean, it can't be anything else, unless it's the heat. Could be the heat, I guess. But I didn't even feel hungry. I didn't feel weak. I didn't feel, I didn't feel, um, deprived of anything. So, I mean, maybe it's just taking that much time for the corn to pass so maybe I just feel full <coughs> pardon me I'm not sure all I do know is it was a we it's a weird side effect um, the other thing I did is I wanted to to really test the Armok diet so I didn't exercise at all right I didn't work out at all okay aside from teaching forms on on Saturday and Sunday I didn't do anything okay so, in fact, I didn't even teach much of the forms. I just watched half the time because they know what they're doing. So, sometimes I just watch them do their form and then make minor corrections if they're making mistakes. And that's it. So, yeah. Now, starting Monday, I'm going to start working out again because I want to give I want to test the Armok diet with a light workout program. Uh, it's just at home. For the next, oh, I don't know. Let me double check the calendar here. Let's see here. So, one, two, three, four. So, for the next four weeks, you know, starting in September, I am going to go to the gym. For now, I am just going to do my cardio. Okay? And when I start going to the gym, I will try to bring, give you as many updates as I can. Um, I have been trying everything under the sun to lose weight except for the stuff I made my students do to lose weight and I think part of it was that I was going to be embarrassed at the gym <laughs> uh, I had to come to terms with a handful of things um, one I haven't weight trained in years and two I am 42 so I think going to the gym after 40 plus after not weight training in you know five years is going to be hard on me <laughs> but I'm gonna have to you know suck it up and just do it because I keep telling people there are no shortcuts and I was trying these diet supplements because people wanted me to try it people wanted me to try a keto diet people wanted me to try oh my god all, all, all kinds of stuff out there and The only way you're going to do it is hard work, okay? Um, I would recommend keep a food journal so you keep you know track of your calories going in. 
and work out. Now, it doesn't have to be going to the gym. I just, you know, I loved the gym, and that's where I belong. You can find other ways to work out. You know, if you are an outdoorsy person, there's a lot of seasonal things you can do all year round to work out. But I do recommend getting some weight traded in. Ooh, excuse me. So, I started getting my stuff together. Um, I went on online, I found a sale for whey protein powder, I bought two tubs of that. Um, I got a new little blender, because how I like to work with my whey protein is I like to mix it with chocolate milk, berries, a banana, mix good, chuck that stuff down and go. Now a lot of people think, well if you want to lose weight, why are you taking getting whey protein powder? Well protein helps build muscle, it helps regenerate muscle tissue, and the more muscle tissue you have, the more fat you're going to burn, and that's my goal. My goal is to just work out an adjustment, but work out like I did back when I was wrestling, competing in martial art competitions, and all that stuff. Um, so to do that, I have to work out like I did then, okay? And some people might be wondering, well, how do you know what you're doing? Well, I know what I'm doing because I started weight training when I was 12 years old, okay? I didn't stop weight training, you know, completely until I was 32. And then I stopped for a few years, and then I started going back to the gym about two years ago, about a year ago, weightlifting, and I just, I stopped going to the gym. I stopped going to the gym because I was having difficulties getting there, I was having difficulties with my right leg. Um, I've decided that I'm just going to get to the gym. That's just, you know, on those storm days, if it's really bad out on a storm day and I can't go, I can't go. Then I will do something at home. But, for the most part, I got, my wife got me a good pair of winter boots, the strange man that lives in my basement, my basement, lives <laughs> in my house, he doesn't live in the basement. The strange man who lives in my house will will take me to the gym, even on extremely cold days, right? So I'm just gonna go. There's no there's no reason not to. I've been paying for this gym membership since you know since I got it and haven't been gone for a year. It's a good thing it was so cheap. <laughs> but I'm going, right? I'm just doing. I'm going back to the way I used to do things. Um, I it worked for. Oh my god. It worked for at least half a dozen students, so I'm sure it can work for me. But I'll be posting updates. Um, my my first three months, I will be doing extremely light weight training. Okay, I'm trying to get my body back into the swing of things, and that's just the way it's going to be. And you will be very unimpressed with how little weight I'll be lifting. <laughs> but I will tell you every time I go at the gym how much I've lifted, what I've done, and, you know, how's it going. Um, will I continue there? I'm up to that while I'm weight training. I think I will as long as I feel physically okay to do it. Because, like I said, I lost 8 pounds, and I indulged. I don't know, man, did I indulge? I haven't indulged that much in, in years. Um, and I still lost 8 pounds. Um, well, imagine what I would have lost if I hadn't indulged. Who knows? We'll never know. Because I indulged. <laughs> oh my goodness. The other reason why I took so long getting on here is because the superintendent finally got around to fixing the roof in my place. All right. Um, it has been leaking for like three, possibly four years. So bad that we have this huge drywall, like rotted drywall, right in my room, right? And puddles would form in my room. And I would tell them over and over again, and I don't understand their thought process. You would think, because that's doing water damage to their property, that they would have that fixed like that. But no, it took three, again, possibly four years to get them to do something. Now that's not my superintendent's fault, that's the landlord's fault. I think the superintendent tells me he's going to fix something and then he has to run it by my landlord and the landlord goes, no, you're not doing that. 
And I seriously think that's what it is. Um, so anyway, they finally came around with the roofer and, you know, he took about three days, you know, not straight eight hour shifts. It was like a couple hours here, a couple hours there, but he fixed the roof, right? Finally. But then my superintendent, the guy that handles all the repairs, said, could you please move your computer and your desk out of the way so I could get in here and you know, replaster this part of the wall, repaint it, and then, you know, because he didn't want to damage my computer. I said, okay. So I did that. He goes, I'm coming by tomorrow. Well, I didn't show up. And he didn't show up the next day. So I called and said, I need to know what's going on. You know, I got the machine conveniently. Uh, I got the answering machine. And I know I got put the voicemail because you know when someone, you call someone and it goes ring, ring, and then they click the voicemail. You know, they picked it up, saw it was me, sent me the voicemail. That's what happened. And I told him, I said, I didn't tell you this before, but I need my computer up and running because my wife is in the Philippines and it's the easiest way for her to contact me if there's any emergency. He still didn't show up. No phone call. Now, any of you guys out there who are superintendents or you make appointments for a living, you need to either keep your appointment or at least call and tell them that you're not coming and why. Because when you do that, when you say, yeah, fuck it, and you don't show up, you're wasting, you know, my day, right? I could have taken my kids to the park. We could have done a whole bunch of little things. But instead, I'm sitting around with my thumb up my ass, waiting for you to show up and do your damn job. Now, I get it if, you know, especially superintendents and guys who are maintenance, I get it that you have to prioritize your work. I fully understand that something else could have came up and could have been more important than some drywall repair and some paint. I get it. But what stops you from picking up your cell phone, calling me and saying, Shane, I'm sorry, this is what's going on. I have to fix this. Nothing's stopping you. You're just being an asshole. <laughs> and it's true. There's no excuse. There is legitimate, there's like, it's not like we were back in the days when we had to give, send messages by pigeon. Everybody has a cell phone, well, except me, but everybody else has a cell phone. <laughs> so you could have done that. And I'm disappointed. Like I would never recommend renting from this company, right? I'm not going to say their name. I might when I move out someday, but seriously, I would never recommend renting from these people, right? Because it takes forever for them to get anything done. I still have a mouse problem, right? Their big solution is they show up and hand me a couple of traps and then leave again. And I am seriously considering going to the Reynolds men to see if I have any legal rights on that because it is getting ridiculous, right? We've had a mouse problem since we moved in here. We moved in here in 20, uh, 2013, right? We moved in, there was mice, okay? So I'm gonna start looking into talking to the Reynolds men, seeing what's what, see what I can do, because it's getting to a point where you know the traps aren't doing it, right? They're not. They're not doing it. They're just. They're just not doing it. <laughs> just, you know, my daughter wants me to get a cat, and I would love to get a cat, but the area we live in, I would be afraid that the cat would get out and get hit by a car, right? Right? Because I would want to keep the cat indoors. Right? I think it's kind of risky and dangerous to let your cats roam around nowadays. They've probably always been risky and dangerous. I just noticing that now. Um, so I would feel horrible if our cat got outside, hit by a car, while my daughter's looking out the window. I mean, that would just be awful. And that's why I don't get a cat. Uh, also because there's so many people coming in and out of here, there's no guarantee that the cat would get to stay in the house. Right? So there's that. But if anybody has any recommendations on how to get rid of mice, I would love to hear it. Because I doubt my landlord is going to do much more than what he's doing now. <laughs> anyway, that's enough for, for, for me today. Um, I want to, again, thank for everybody for your support and help. I appreciate it. Um, some of you people on Facebook didn't really know me. And you made donations to my wife. And again, I appreciate it. It was, you know... 
wonderful of you, and I, and I'm grateful. But anyway, until next time, remember you can do it, and you're worth it. Bye for now.